probably remember that we had homework. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing your answers and things. <clears throat> what we're talking about is the Christ life and the crucified life. And what I was wanting is examples of, <clears throat> from the scripture, of the Christ life evident in somebody or some situation um, that it didn't directly just say, that's Jesus. Um, but we will accept those too, but, you know. Or that's, that's Christ crucified there. <clears throat> And so what I'm going to do is start off with an example of both on here. And I, I hope I'm not stealing anybody's thunder. But uh, Philippians 1, chapter 1, <clears throat> and verse 8 is an example of the Christ life <clears throat> at work within us. Did I steal it from anybody in here? Uh, Philippians 1, 8. Okay. Well, I do too, because I was going to just stay here to show birth, but not ex exactly right after. <clears throat> All right, Philippians 1.8. Oh, by the way, uh, any, anybody on Skype, um, we will, uh, if you give the scriptural reference when the time comes, we will uh, look it up, and then it will count for you too, because I told people on Skype if they, you know. <clears throat> All right. Philippians 1, 8. For God is, God is my record, how greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Okay, so he is basically the first subject of that is, is Paul is longing after them, but it is not within himself, but within that which is in the heart. Some people translate that the heart. There's a few other translations of it. Um, but um, this is his record, he's saying, that I long after you. <clears throat> but then he's pointing to the Christ life or Christ in him as the actual acting agent within him. Okay. So, you know, now there's, there's a, you know, I mean, if you can imagine, if, if you can imagine if, if these two, the, the life of Christ, or Christ in us, if you want to say it that, and the crucified life being the lamb or, or Christ crucified in us, if that's really, really true, don't you think that we would get a lot of examples of that in the scripture? And um, all right, so I want to give you one now in the same chapter on uh, the crucified life or Christ crucified. And that is beginning with verse uh, 15. <clears throat> Remember in this, in this uh, book that Paul is in prison. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill. The, the one preach Christ of contention, not sincere, sincere, since, sincerely, I'm, I can't see or think yet, um, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. <clears throat> All right, so what is he saying here? He is saying that there are two groups uh, that are talking about this, and one group is uh, bad-mouthing Paul, saying, you're not... Um, you know, you're not a good picture of a representation of the gospel or of Christ. You're in prison. This looks bad. <laughs> this looks bad publicly. People can go, you know, this, is, this, this guy's their top preacher and he's in jail. <clears throat> um, so of contention. And uh, so they're going at Paul based on that. Uh, in verse 17, but the other of love, knowing 
that what I'm doing is being set for the defense of the gospel, that this isn't just me being thrown in prison because I'm a bad person or a bad uh, witness, but actually, if you understand Christ crucified, that this actually, like Jesus, I mean, he was looked at as a criminal, he was looked at as a heretic hanging on the cross, and yet he was neither of those or anything else that they accused him of. And, um, and he did it for others, but he never justified himself and he never tried to make himself look good or whatever. So you've got Paul here going, look, I'm here. I, I'm not here because I have done things wrong, uh, but I am here for the Lord. I am here by the life of, the, of Christ crucified, by the nature, as it were, actually, of Christ crucified. And, um, and of course, and just like when Jesus hung on the cross, you had people that were, you know, lying and spreading rumors of certain things that his disciples came and took the body and there was no resurrection and stuff like that of contention. And, um, but you had the reality of it, and that was that Jesus had died and God raised him from the dead because of the kind of death that he died, because it was a selfless death. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see, was there one more part of that? Well, just um, uh, the, in verse 16, they're supposing that they're adding affliction to my bonds. <clears throat> but Paul is saying, it's what I've said before, Jesus was not murdered. Jesus was a sacrifice. Okay? He gave himself. All right? <clears throat> so these people are trying to uh, pile on. That's an old saying we used to have. They're, they're trying to uh, put him in a worse light even beyond that. <clears throat> and um, Paul's saying, but the others are preaching Christ of love. Love by this perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Love, that love. They, these are uh, preaching of, of love, uh, but the other of love, <clears throat> knowing, and that's the key word here for those who are preaching that, knowing that I'm set for the defense of the gospel. I'm going to be able to minister to people that you couldn't normally even get to in the government. <laughs> being brought before the officials and all this kind of stuff and, <clears throat> and uh, being a testimony of Christ crucified. So that's, that's two different examples of this right here. <clears throat> so what I want to do is um, just uh, call different ones up and have you do one, one scripture and then we'll just go through, uh, you know, here and there uh, as far as what we've got here. So I guess we'll start with the students. So pick out one of the 10 that you have. And um, Jason, you want to come up first? You look really different without your beard and everything. Uh -huh. So, like, the first one I got, it's one scripture, but you need, like, an, another scripture for its context. That's Can fine. I do that? All right. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying you can go for an hour. No, I'm not. I'm not. not. <laughs> it's just uh, something that my dad touched upon in the uh, John class. It's something I just sort of looked it up in a... It was, it was really cool. It was really of the Lord. But it's in the Gospel of John at the very end. This is the scriptures that you need for context. When he's talking to Peter and he's uh, asking him three times, Peter, do you love me? And uh, we, we see the word love there, but in the original Greek, there's two words for love being used there. And Jesus is saying, Peter, do you agape me? Which is a more godly love it's a more respectful love it's just it's viewing him as he is the son of god 
And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I phileho you. And that's a brotherly love, love for the brethren. And Jesus asks again, uh, Peter, do you agape me? Peter says, yes, Lord, I phileho you. And finally, at the very end, Jesus says, Peter, do you phileho me? And Peter is just ashamed that Christ had to come down to his level. But, you know, that's just the mercy of God that he's willing to do that because he knows that Peter hasn't received the spirit to, uh, to, see, to see him as he really is yet. But, you know, so just in First Peter, verse 8, and, you know, Christ tells Peter at the end of John, you're going to learn my love unto the cross, you know. That you're going to know that kind of love, the agape love. In 1 verse 8, it's talking about Christ. I'll start at verse 7. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, ye love. And that word right there is agape. And throughout this whole letter, anytime he's talking about the love for Christ, he's using that word agape. So I just saw Christ, you know, that, that love for Christ being formed in Peter when he's talking now to his brethren, because he talks about brotherly love but then he talks about our love for Christ being something much more. So I just uh, I saw that in that verse with Peter. And it's like, you know, it's just a small little word, but just imagine Peter, what he had to go through to learn that, you know. And it was took a lot of <laughs> death in himself, I'm sure, and just seeing Christ in a real way. Amen. For those on Skype, that uh, was uh, in, uh, let's say it was in John 21, <clears throat> and um, beginning with verse, uh, where was it, 15? No. Yeah, yes, verse 15. Um, yeah, there's... Uh, several different things in relationship to that. Um, one um, is that <clears throat> we can we can we can learn from Jesus' teachings. And the other one is we can live by Jesus' life. And so you know I think both of these apply here is is that Peter was being instructed by Jesus, okay, and that but that still makes it it still puts these these two outside of you if it's just that, you know, we need to see that we need to understand that, but then <clears throat> Peter, uh, certainly both in First and Second Peter, um, he really gets hold of it. I mean, I saw this same thing in relationship to um, uh, him denying the Lord. And um, so then he says, he talks about being born again, like from a whole different perspective. He says, being born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God which liveth. And so he's like, that's the seed of Christ. That's him in us. And that was his hope, Christ in you, the hope. And that, that was him saying, you know, I failed miserably, but now I'm here to tell you it's more. Because remember, this is the guy that stood before everybody and said, I will never deny you, Jesus. I will never do that. And he got a good taste of himself and his failures and whatever, which is good, by the way. It's a, it's a good dose. We need that because we think we're better than what we are. But if we were really that good, we wouldn't need Christ in us. We wouldn't need the nature of the lamb in us, would we? If we're really that good, you know. <clears throat> so then he comes back, Peter comes back and starts talking about um, that love and starts using the right word and starts using it in the context of his, the life that he's trying to emulate and live according to not just emulate but 
live according to the life of Christ. Okay, you want to come, Chris, and share one? Acts 14:20. Um, so um, <clears throat> I can just read it. Um, but when the dis- well, it, I guess it's 14:19. Um, but Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. Uh, verse 20. But when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and entered the city, and on to the next. Um, on to the next day, he went on with Barnabas to Derby, and um, I just I felt like since it said they supposed him for dead, you know he probably was beaten pretty good, but yet he he got back up and went back into the city and other cities thereafter. Um, and then I also thought it was neat that <clears throat> he got up after being surrounded by the body of Christ. Um, so obviously, I think that's you know the life of Christ as opposed to him, which would be to probably run or, you know, not go back into it. So that's it. Yeah, the next verse after that is, uh, and you alluded to it, but you didn't read it, was verse, uh, um, well, I'll read 19. First, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persecuted the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he, he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And then verse 21, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. That's, that's called crazy. You know what I mean? That's either Jesus <laughs> or that's just flat out crazy. Because, you know, I'm with you. I think, I think he was beaten pretty bad, you know, and he must have looked rough. But can you imagine if word got around, you know, that, yeah, we killed him. And then he comes back to town and he looks bad, but he's just on fire, full of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's almost like a witness of Christ from the dead, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, let's see here. We've heard from the young and the restless. Um, Dennis, you got something? Come on, brother. While looking through uh, the scriptures again, uh, and particularly looking for this, looking for this, uh, it's amazing. Uh, Galatians is, there's a lot of stuff in Galatians, a lot of stuff, uh, particularly in the second half of the uh, letter. But there are a couple. Uh, the third chapter, and I'll start with the 26th verse. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither uh, bond nor uh, free, uh, but 29. And If ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Uh, There's a whole dynamic that I see working out here, but not without Christ in me. Uh, 
another verse, and I'm going to go over to chapter 4 now. And uh, verse 19, 419. Uh, and I find this, I find this as a, sort of a, uh, uh, an expectation that is not met by Paul. He says, um, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again, until Christ be formed in you. What? Not formed in you yet? And this is why I'm coming around. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice. For I stand in doubt of you. <laughs> uh, he's, uh, Paul's on a mission and uh, he wants to be sure he brings out the fact that Christ is in them. I guess I'd never really <clears throat> um, had that stand out before, like like uh, Dennis just shared it uh, with the the part about the doubt. Um, what is that pertaining to? Well, my little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. We know they're Christians. You know what I mean. We know they're already saved. We know they're following the Lord to probably a large degree when you look at the whole letter and what all has been said. Um, but I don't know if this is to the whole church or part of them here, but my little children, first of all, <laughs> not just children, but little children. And he's saying that in relationship to Christ being formed in you. You know, of course, he said that, but the next part was, uh, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. And that, that's, that was really good. That I'd never really, the doubt is, you know, I, you know, praise God, I'm glad you're Christians, but I have some real doubts until Christ is formed. I mean, that's kind of the way I got it. Maybe that's not what it's saying, but that's the feel that I got, especially when you read it the way you did. I was going, hmm. I think that's, I think that's what he's saying, you know, that, and, you know, let's face it, until Christ is formed in us, we should have lots of doubts about ourselves, you know. <laughs> Amen. Um, Lindsay, is there anybody on Skype that wants to shoot us a scripture and then maybe a, a word or two? Okay. <clears throat> okay, why don't you check and then I will have, uh, let's see, Caitlin, you want to come bring something? First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 33. 33. Um, and this is Paul speaking, obviously. Um, I guess 32, whatever, I don't know. Give no offense neither to the Jews nor to the Greeks nor to the church of God, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. And I don't know if that's the crucified life or the Christ, but it's definitely, he's not seeking his own profit or his own gain, but but specifically speaking someone else's profit. So I think that's, that's definitely Jesus. to that and, and sort of a support for that uh, is um, <clears throat> Romans 15 and uh, a couple of verses here but verse starting with verse 1 we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and to not please ourselves okay um, <clears throat> so that that could just sound like Christian doctrine at that point yeah. right 
you should you just shouldn't do this the way you should be right and this is one of the reasons why I'm trying to do this and I hope everybody understands this <clears throat> is because this many of the things that are said in the scriptures about Christian conduct <clears throat> um, can simply be thought of in terms of Christian conduct instead of Christ in us and so what we want to do is we want to really start being able to see if indeed if indeed these things are really talking about the life of Christ within us so <clears throat> so verse 2 let every one of us please his neighbor for his good edification still sounds like Christian doctrine don't please yourself you know we're good Christians Okay, then verse um, <clears throat> 3, For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. And I, I, I like that because he's saying not to please yourself, don't please yourself, which is a very Christian, christian -y thing. And then he gives an example. He says Christ, but then here's, where, here's his example of he didn't please himself. The reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. And, and so he's taking this to the cross. Right? He's taking that thing to the cross. And he's not just saying, yeah, Jesus didn't please himself, you know. Someone offered him an ice cream and he didn't take it, you know. <laughs> this is not that kind of, you know. And if, the, he, and if, and if uh, Romans didn't specify that we would go okay well i'm going to skip you know having something or doing something today just to be spiritual you know and um which monks and all sorts of other religions do stuff like that and they don't do it by christ so you know i remember saying probably many times before you know you got <clears throat> You got Muslims, you got monks, you got, they got, they have a book, they have a temple they go to, they have the prayers, they have, they have all of this. What makes us different than them? We, well, most people say, well, we're, we're praying to Jesus. But it's got to be more than that. Amen? It's got to be more than that. I mean, really, that's it? We, okay, we found, it's like shooting arrows and we, we hit the right one, you know. No, it's because of his life within us. Yes, it's because of the cross, but it was because the lamb went to the cross and gave himself. And, and so here, I mean, it's just incredible to me, but as it is written, the reproaches of them uh, that pro reproach thee fell on me. He's bearing everybody's reproach. He's not just not pleasing himself. You know, this is an extreme example of not pleasing yourself, but it's really not extreme at all in light of the cross. It's Christ crucified. Anyway, it's, it's really good. Uh, let's see here. Lindsay, you got something? Oh. Um, who? Robert does on that? Okay, lay it on us. Okay. He said, I see Christ in Philemon, okay. in his willingness, talking about the person, in his willingness to go back to his master, not really knowing what the outcome will be, but willing no matter the outcome. Well, you know, that whole book is it. The whole book is <laughs> just Christ in Paul. Everything he says is what Jesus did on the cross. Um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, for uh, let's see there's that word again uh, wherefore though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee being such an one as Paul the aged and now also the prisoner of Jesus Christ this guy's an apostle and known as an apostle but he refuses in this situation to even mention that, but just, I'm old. <laughs> hmm, I think I'll start doing that. Maybe I can get away with more. Just kidding, that's totally against the nature of Christ. <laughs> um, 
<clears throat> but without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be, as it were, of necessity, but willingly. You know, I mean, there are so many churches and people and ministries and things that sort of conscript everybody to do stuff. And to me, you know, some of you have been around a long time, and you know that we have suffered in areas that we could have done stuff if I had have just sort of said, hey, we need to do this. Uh, and, you know, said, well, you know, this is a church thing we do, and you need to do it, and all this kind of stuff. If it's not in our hearts, I don't even think we should be doing it. I mean, if, and if it's not Christ in us, what's the point? We're, then we're, you know, it doesn't matter if we preach Christ in us or Christ in him crucified. If, um, if we're going to just sort of force people to do things, then it's not him. It's the, it's the, the pressure, whether it be peer pressure or whatever else. We want it to come by his life everything and and if if we only have like three things in actuality in the church that are functioning because it's coming by life yay let's cut everything out and do that amen okay um thanks jason uh lindsay you want to come try one now Going to Philippians 4. Um, verses. I'm not one good at sticking to one verse. There we go. It's um, 14. I said 14 through, through 17. I'll read them quick. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Um, so I thought it was kind of twofold in this these verses because it's, it's, it reminded me of in 1 Corinthians when Paul talks about giving honor to, to weaker members, and certainly the Philippians are weaker members, especially, you know, compared to him, who's like the apostle over them, but he is um, calling Jesus what's Jesus in less mature and weaker vessels. He's still honoring Christ in weaker vessels, um, and... and um, that's Jesus in him, and it's also Jesus in him that he's, he's, he's declaring them, so because he wants them, he wants them to be rewarded for what they've done for him. But it wouldn't be Christ in them to declare that, so he's declaring it for them. But then also, in fairness, it was also Jesus in the Philippian church um, to take care of Paul, even when uh, they had they weren't going to benefit from it because he was, he was elsewhere, so. Yeah, they were, uh, the histor history behind that is that <clears throat> Paul and his little traveling group were gathering money because there was a famine going on in Jerusalem and it was pretty severe. And so they were trying to gather whatever they could and bring it to the Jerusalem church. <clears throat> and so apparently, because we have several examples of that uh, throughout the New Testament of where Paul was referring to this, and uh, so apparently he's sort of talking about in that range, but it also um, uh, uh, would have some benefit to him also. And uh, so he mentions that, you know, only, you know, only ye only have given, 
And, uh, and then he's saying, he's bringing this subject up, not because I desire a gift. And, um, you know, let's face it, we can be very sneaky. You know, we can bring stuff up in a certain way because we do desire a gift or something. And, um, and it's a form of manipulation. It's just trying to get people to move in a way that will bless us or please us or whatever. And um, I mean, you know, if it's not according to his life, again, I mean, I would say that, but everything in here we've talking about so far has been according to his life or his self-giving life. And um, uh, if nothing else, it's, it's teaching us what some people call ethics, but it's not ethics, it's Christ. It's Christ. And um, that which comes to us automatically by his nature is wonderful. But our conscience need to be able to be smitten if we're doing things to manipulate people to get you know, to get certain things. <clears throat> Paul apparently wasn't doing that. He says, uh, <clears throat> um, not that I desired a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Okay. If that's true, that sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds like Jesus. And if it is true, and I think it is because it's in the Word of God, um, then his work <clears throat> is uh, not self-promotion, but is trying to get people to move by the life of Christ so that it'll abound back to him. Now, here's how, here's how you can really know that, the rest of what he says here. Um, uh, verse 18, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. See, he's not talking about, well, you blessed us. You blessed the church. You, you understand the terminology. He's saying this was a sacrifice, and if it's well-pleasing to God and it's a sweet savor, a sweet odor, that's the, that's the only one that's the acceptable sacrifice, working through them. And so it's not the thing that's being given. It's the spirit which it's given his life and his spirit and his nature. So it's the spirit that's this sweet savor and that touches God's heart. <clears throat> and a lot of times, see, we think, you know, for example, if there's, you know, you're trying to raise money to build a building, which a lot of churches are and do and will do till, you know, Jesus comes back and, yeah, <laughs> blows them up. Lindsay's head blows him up. What? <laughs> um, and then he says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. This is, this is the riches that are in him. <laughs> See? They're the riches that are in him. This is going to be his supply. You know, we go, well, don't worry. You gave so you're going to get a lot back. It's going to be really good. So give big. <laughs> uh, he's 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 saying, look, here's where you here's where you're going to get it back. My God will supply, not according to your need, not according to how much you gave, but according to His riches, Jesus's riches. Amen. So. You don't mind me commenting on this stuff, do you? But it's, it's, it's exciting. This is great. Okay, let's see. Carol, you want to come? It's also in Philippians um, 2, uh, 19 through 22-ish. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon so that I too may be cheered of news by, of, by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned with your welfare. 
for they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ, but you know Timothy's proven worth. How is a son with a father he has served me with in the gospel? Wow, you get several things in there, don't you? Um, what a what a blessing, you know. Paul is talking about Timothy. He's talking about that he, I don't really have anyone else that cares for you, you know, like I do, like Christ does. And um, uh, that that's, that's touching Paul, you know. I mean, it has to be the reality of everything that he preaches, which is Christ's life, which is Christ crucified, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, that all these things, and then he's looking at a human being and saying, some of the things are coming out. <laughs> it's, it's starting to be real. Um, There's really several things in here. You know, he's talking about it like a father to a son. You know. Well, that's the eternal relationship. That's that's the that's the family that existed before anything else existed. A father and a son. We say well, everything is a shadow. Well, it is, but that's not a shadow. That was always there. And then this whole thing with Epaphroditus after it, it, I love it. I always have, though, when I first saw it. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier. I'm sorry, this verse 24, is that where I'm at? 20, what? Yes, <clears throat> 25. But your messenger... And he that ministered to my wants, for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. <laughs> he was sad because you heard that he'd been sick and he didn't want you feeling bad because he's sick. It's like we do just the opposite, you know. You know, I've been sick and I want you all to know. Um, and then he says he was sick nigh unto death <laughs> but I it really bummed me out that it made you sad that you heard um, but God had mercy on him and not on him only but on me also lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow because he's this is one of his right-hand men, you know. And, um, and I send him, therefore, the more carefully that when you see him again, you may rejoice and that I may be less sorrowful because the sor their sorrow and then his sickness is sorrow upon sorrow. And it's like we're so concerned about ourselves, you know. I mean, you know, it's like... Uh, I won't say that. Praise God. You know, I remember, you probably remember this, me sharing in uh, Abel's church down in Houston, a Spanish-speaking church, so Abel was translating in Spanish for me, and uh, this is the first time I ever saw an iPad being used for the Bible, <clears throat> and I had my Bible, my King James Bible, and um, so he had, he was beside me on a pulpit that extended, and he looked over at me and he said, I'll, I'll race you to see who can get to the scriptures faster. And I've, I have been able to get to the scriptures faster than everybody, <laughs> but throughout the course of that, I actually beat him because I know where the scriptures were. And he was just going, this ain't right. <laughs> it's funny. Um, Deb, did you have something? Uh, 
Uh, this one's going to be uh, from 1 Corinthians. It's actually five scriptures. And I think Corinthians is one of the later epistles that have been written. So um, the, to me, the first two scriptures will show Christ the crucified life because he's uh, been walking with the Lord longer. And then the next three would be the re result of the Christ life in him, Christ living in him. It's 1 Corinthians 4, verse 9 through 13. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. In labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are as the offscoring of all things unto this day. So I just felt like it was just really showing that... Um, crucified life that from over time him being older in the Lord now that it's, it's showing that and through all the trials and things he went through but I just felt like it was saying the crucified life He's got Timothy in here again. For this cause have I, this is verse 17, for this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, my beloved son. He is meant. He's the, he's the firstborn. That word, beloved son, is a direct reference to the firstborn, and it's also a direct reference to the firstborn is supposed to be given to God. That's, that's the... Uh, we saw that in Exodus 12, um, and uh, wow, he's my, basically saying he is my firstborn, uh, faithful uh, in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which are in Christ. Now, some are puffed up as though I would not come into you. Sorry, I'm just jumping down and just <laughs> thought I'd just break the little, yeah, the little, the, that's, that last one is this right here, the crucified life. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Maui? I'm in Philippians 2 as well, believe it or not. There's still more, but um, on Epaphroditus, a little further down from where Randy had read. In um, Philippians 2, verse 30, it says, Because for the work of Christ he was near unto death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service towards me. And so I saw two different elements there. First of all, um, he's giving his life. He didn't spare his own life. He was... He was dead in his own heart to get to that point, but um, he was serving Paul, and he didn't spare his own life, but also he was covering the Philippians who did not support Paul in this instance the way he was, they, they probably should have, and he covered the Philippians and took the whole burden of what the church, like the church should have sent a support, and one man just took an extra job, I guess, and just did it, and I, that's, so there was a two-sided yeah. thing there, so. Sky. I'm already there. <laughs> Go ahead. Let me let me read it to everybody here, and then we'll get the comment. 
And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Okay. Amen. Well, and you, you know, his wording is the same as the Lord's. But bigger than that is if he meant it. <laughs> if he meant, Father, forgive them. If he really meant that, then that's the life of Christ. Amen? And um, <clears throat> calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. fell asleep. I thought I was tired. <laughs> That's a joke. We got someone else on there? I'm there. <laughs> okay, let me read it then. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Christ is the word, and to be a doer of the word is another form of living Christ. <coughs> that, that, no, I'm, I'm teasing. <laughs> You know, for these, I really should have a gong up here. <laughs> but I wouldn't have gonged anybody. Just, just to put the fear of God in you. I'm kidding. So was there someone else on there? One more. Okay. Let me read it so that, uh, oh, yeah. is it just 24? <clears throat> Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. And any comment on that? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, you can't get any closer than <laughs> Jesus' words. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, it's really time to quit already. Can you believe it? We only went one round, and y'all still have nine left. Uh, Jan, we didn't do you, did we? Oh, well, grab one of your husbands real quick. <laughs> Look at him. He's going, you ain't getting one of mine. <laughs> okay, so here's what we'll do. Keep them, please. Keep, keep this. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see if we'll get another shot at this. Because I don't know if y'all realize how important this little class was. But it really helps us to see that this is not about Christianity. It's about Christ. This is not about doing the right thing. It's about doing the right thing and being crucified with Christ so that he can live in us. This is not about um, uh, seeking high, I mean, so many of the examples we got, the orientation was really good, you know. Uh, it was not about seeking a higher place, but a lower one so that others would be blessed. 
man, that's just the life of Christ. Now, I know that we can, we can fake that or copy it, but I, that's why I liked, um, uh, that was why I liked Romans 15 so much when he said, please not yourself. And even as Jesus didn't please himself, but all the stuff that should have fallen on them fell on me, all of the blame and everything like that. And uh, that's, that's right orientation. It's not about building yourself to a higher place, but getting lower that Christ may fill up all the, the lack or the emptiness or the, or the, or the um, unselfishly pouring out of your, you know, your abilities and this and that so that Christ may fill you as a vessel. And that doesn't mean he wouldn't use those abilities and things, but what it means is it will be Christ doing it. He gave, you know, they're gifts, but then he's also the life within you that can use those gifts. Amen? All right. Well, let's pray real quick, and then we'll take a break, and then Kelly will come back. Father, we love you, and we thank you. I thank you, Father, for the, the word that was brought here tonight by each of these. and the heart behind it to find you, to really find you in the word where it didn't just blatantly say that was you and, and that was so wonderful, Father. And just the, just the heart seeking and the taking of the time to search the scriptures, Father. I pray that you'll bless each one of them with what they've searched so far and what uh, others have shared. And I pray that you'll give us another time where we can go through more of these because it's a blessing to see your son in the word of God, Father, but see your son in the word of God as he is in living people that are mentioned in God's word, in your word. So we thank you. We love you. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.